Vladimir Putin has placed Russia's nuclear forces on high alert. A wave of sanctions have hit the Russian economy. Their banks are being cut off. Their assets are being frozen. Reports that the ruble has dropped nearly 30 percent and more countries have begun to take sides. Switzerland is breaking away from traditional neutrality and imposing sanctions on Russia. Brazil has declared neutrality, saying they're going to wait. China, of course, has taken the side of Russia. And according to intelligence reports, Belarus is set to join the war effort with Russia. For the first time in my life, there seems to be a very real prospect for nuclear war or World War III. Now, I say that understanding I was born just at the end of the Cold War. I was only a few years uh, after I was born that the Cold War officially ended. The Soviet Union collapsed. I suppose it's fair to say there was always a real threat of nuclear war. A lot of people still don't want to believe it. They say that we're not quite there. It'll never happen. Or that mutually assured destruction, it can't happen. It won't be a thing. But looking at the news and seeing the economic damage to Russia, seeing the increased desperation, the, the situation Vladimir Putin is being put in, or the alternative parallel global economies that could emerge from this suggests, yeah, we could have nuclear war. But what does that really mean? I don't know if it means mutually assured destruction. I honestly don't think so. I don't know if it means Russia does anything beyond just Ukraine. But seeing more countries line up and seeing the peace talks falter, it doesn't leave me confident. At any rate, this could result in just a regional war in Eastern Europe, but this will impact you and your life. It will impact energy prices. It'll have serious consequences for inflation, and it will ripple around the world. There is still reason to believe, however, that all is not lost. There may not be anything outside of what's the, the, this conflict in Ukraine. It could end here. And that is due to the actions of the West sanctioning Russia. I don't know if Vladimir Putin will be able to ma maintain popular support or morale among Russian military as celebrities come out condemning this. Even Russian high, pro uh, high profile individuals seemingly upset and outraged, not wanting to be involved in this. As their economy takes a hit, as their money becomes worthless, as money is being offered to Russian soldiers to defect. You see, in fourth and fifth generational warfare, psych psychology plays a huge role. And you have to understand that there are many people in Russia who use Western technology for their lives. Strange stories emerging about Russian only fans women losing their sources of income. Stories about regular people being hit by the sanctions, a potential run on the banks. The Russian stock exchange has, has remained closed. It won't be opened. There are reports that Russia is ordering people to either bring their money back into the country or preventing them from sending their money outside of the country, which could indicate the economic stability of Russia is just, un it's unfortunately too unstable for Vladimir Putin to wage a conflict like this. And fortunately for anybody who doesn't want war, the sanctions might actually work. But then comes China cheering on Russia, defending them because they certainly want to take Taiwan. They can provide backbone for Russia. Now there's reports about Russia trying to operate using silver or gold or potentially even Bitcoin. Apparently, China has, an, has, has some kind of operation that can sustain Russia should their economy take too massive of a hit. And for the past decade, we have been hearing, for those that have been following the news, that Russia and China have been preparing to get off the petrodollar for selling oil. I can't see the future. I don't know what to tell you. I can only give you the updates that we're seeing so far and give you one simple warning. The fog of war is real. We don't know what is true and what is false, even among trusted news sources. A lot of the news that's been reported has been wrong, and that's normal. And it's a challenge. When a bomb drops, we say who did it and why, and you'll get initial reports. Now, sometimes those reports are just wrong. Sometimes you are intentionally misled, and this makes things very, very difficult to track. We can take a look at some of these stories and to the best of our abilities, try to decide what is true and what isn't. So that's what I'm going to try and show you. I'm going to try and show you the sentiments coming from world leaders to give us a better assessment of what may happen next and how it will impact you. And of course, what we're hearing is that inflation is going to get dramatically worse. When they come out and they say the ruble is dropping against the dollar and the markets in Russia are bad, you think that won't affect you? 
It will. We import oil from Russia, or I should say, look at the Nord Stream 2 pipeline. They need gas from Russia into Europe. Europe is going to get hit. We in turn will get hit. Whatever happens with the Russian economy, we are tied to it as well. We won't be hurt as badly as Russia is, but this will impact you. So please pay attention, remain calm, and think. Be smart. This could all end tomorrow. It could all get substantially worse. I don't know about nuclear forces. I don't know about nuclear war or anything like that. But I will read you what's happening and give you my thoughts so far. Before we get started, head over to TimCast.com and become a member if you would like to support our work, the work we do here. As a member, you get access to exclusive segments on the TimCast IRL podcast, about a half an hour long, uncensored episodes with our guests. We have those up Monday through Thursday around 11 p.m. every night. But most importantly, when you're a member, what you're getting is you're funding our journalists. But we don't put our news behind a paywall. We just hope that you value it enough that you will sign up to help keep our journalists employed. Right now, we have Elad. He's on the ground covering the people's convoy traveling the country. These trips aren't easy. They're expensive. But with your support, we'll keep doing it. Don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe to this channel, share this video anywhere you can if you really want to support the work we do. And I'll get started real quick with just uh, just reiterating this story you've probably already heard because it is serious. This is from Anchorage Daily News, just choosing a local news source here. Vladimir Putin puts Russian nuclear forces on high alert as Ukrainian civilian deaths mount. What this means, whether or not Vladimir Putin is going to use nuclear weapons, I don't know. He could be saber rattling. I only tell you what's being reported, and this is true. Russia has done this. It could be a threat. It could be nothing. It could be Russia saying, we're going to do it. We are. I really don't know. I know a lot of people will comment saying it'll never happen. And by all means, you're free to believe what you want. I can't see the future. But please just be aware of normalcy bias and optimism bias, which I've been mentioning several times in the past few segments I've done covering this war. Normalcy bias is this belief that things don't change. It can't happen. No, not nothing like this. It can't happen. Optimism bias is the idea that something this bad can't happen. Oh, nuclear war, that's out of the question. No, things are going to be fine. Things will get better. Don't be biased. They could get better. It's true. Don't have a pessimism bias either. Assuming things could get worse, the sanctions may be working. Which brings me to our first story. Stark stuff, man. Axios reports, Russian forces shell civilian areas as first round of peace talks end. Suffice it to say, many are viewing the peace talks as not going well. Axios continues, as a first round of peace talks concluded at the Ukraine-Belarus border on Monday, Ukrainian cities, including Kharkiv in the east, were continuing to face some of the heaviest shelling of the war thus far, with reports of significant civilian casualties. The latest, a senior U.S. defense official told reporters that Russian forces advanced toward Kiev by around five kilometers in the past 24 hours putting them roughly 25 kilometers outside the city center. Journalists in the Ukrainian capital are reporting missile fire and loud explosions. Russia has deployed nearly 75% of its assembled combat power inside Ukraine and has launched approximately 380 missiles so far. Five days into the war, Russia has still not achieved air superiority over Ukraine, with its ground forces running out of gas and having logistics problems. The officials said the Russians' goal continues to be encircle Kiev, from multiple locations, and to capture the cities of Kharkiv and Mariupol to isolate eastern Ukraine. In the town of Berdyansk, which is now under Russian control, residents shouted at the occupying troops to go home and sang the Ukrainian national anthem. I don't know it's true. This could be true, but really, look, I don't see a reason for outlets like Axios <clears throat> to lie, but I do think it's, it's important to question their sources. And these are serious challenges. There is no reason to believe that Russia is losing this war. And often you will see propaganda videos. We're getting them. Russian soldiers laughing, being like, Russia, you are you are going to die. They're saying, Russian soldiers, you better back off now because when you're dead, we're going to crack the cigars. I'm not speaking literally. I'm speaking figuratively. There are these videos where the, the Ukrainian soldiers are laughing. Morale is extremely important in a war. If the Russian forces feel like there's no reason for this war or that they're losing, they'll back off. 
You need your people to believe in what they're fighting for. Can Vladimir Putin maintain this in the face of massive Western propaganda? I don't know. I really don't. As, as Russian citizens get cut off from Western economic sources and social media, they feel the pain. And are they going to believe it? I don't know. Ukraine's defense minister, Oleski Reznikov, wrote in a Facebook post, we offer Russian soldiers a choice to die in an unjust war or full amnesty and 5 million rubles of compensation if they put down their guns and voluntarily surrender to prison. Full amnesty? Surrender to prison? Seems a bit contradictory, I suppose. But they are offering 5 million rubles in compensation. I don't know the exact conversion, but I think that's probably only like, I think tens of thousands of dollars. I'm not entirely sure. I can look up. I think there's a conversion rate in one of the stories I've pulled up. At the first round of talks ended, one of the Ukrainian representatives, Zelensky, uh, representatives, Zelensky advisor Mikhail Podolyak tweeted that the Russian side was extremely biased. Expectations of a breakthrough remain low. Well, I, I don't, I don't, I don't know exactly how to how, how to tell you um, who to believe. I, I, mean, I don't know how to tell you what to believe because Brazil is, is playing neutral. Switzerland joined the fray. This is this is huge historically. Let's let's actually get into this. Take a look at this. CNN reports Ukrainian intelligence suggests Belarus is prepared to join Russian invasion and U.S. suspends operations at the embassy. I think this is a suggestion that their intelligence is likely correct or either they're pushing Belarus in this direction or they believe Belarus will join Russia. The U.S. suspending operations at the Belarusian embassy suggests they may be joining with Russia. Bolsonaro won't condemn Putin, says Brazil will remain neutral over invasion. Of course, we know about the BRICS economic bloc, which is uh, Brazil, Russia, India, China, and um, who's the who's the S? <laughs> I can't remember. Um, S. I can't remember exactly. Uh, so forgive me. Fact check me on that one. But uh, Brazil staying neutral on this issue, I think. Oh, I'm sorry. It's South Africa. I believe it's South Africa. Uh, remaining neutral is not surprising. On Friday, Brazil voted for a draft UN security resolution that would have denounced the Russian invasion of Ukraine despite reluctance by Bolsonaro. So this is important to point out. Bol Bolsonaro won't con won't condemn Putin and says, says Brazil will remain neutral. We'll see exactly how this plays out. At a press conference, Bolsonaro said he spoke for two hours with Putin. In a subsequent statement, the country's foreign minister said Bolsonaro did not speak with Putin on Sunday, but instead was referring to his conversation with the Russian leader in Moscow. In Sunday's press conference, Bolsonaro said Brazil will remain neutral in the conflict, noting Russia and Ukraine were practically brother nations. We have this major news. Russia-Ukraine live updates Russia central bank assets frozen. Switzerland joins sanctions. Now, this is fascinating because Switzerland announced on Monday it will sanction Russia. Switzerland reaffirms its solidarity with Ukraine and its people. It will be delivering relief supplies for people who have fled to Poland. Switzerland has been famous for its neutrality. The measures match those of the European Union, of which Switzerland is not a member. This is many people thinking this could get substantially worse. Vladimir Putin is being put in a historically difficult position. It's affecting their economy, but we have more updates. This one may be the most... Um, I think, damaging to the peace effort. Zelensky, in a passionate speech, urges the EU to admit Ukraine immediately. This one, in my opinion, is sickening and is ridiculous. And I think Zelensky is playing a dangerous game. And I think this may be one of the re uh, one, one reason you see all this propaganda. Look, I, 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 uh, um, I like Zelensky. I, I think he's an all right dude. And this, this, is, this is even before any of this conflict broke out. He's a comedian and actor. He ends up uh, running for office. He wins. Seems like a chill guy. How about that? Coming out now and urging EU admittance, in my opinion, is a manipulation of the, of, of the current circumstances to gain from NATO because you, you, you've got in Ukraine the pro-NATO, you've got the pro-Russia. They're split. My understanding is, and again, going way back to 2014 when I, when I, when I talked to people there, EU is favored in Ukraine. And for obvious reasons, I've mentioned before, Russia, they don't have a good track record in being in charge of Ukraine with the Holodomor. So in, the U in, in Ukraine, they've tried, they've, they've wanted to join the European Union. It would be a boon for their economy, but it would not work out for the EU as much. Thus, the EU has said, 
You need to dramatically improve your economy if we're going to let you in. Look at what happens with Greece and Spain. Their economy is, is thrown into chaos. It causes problems for the rest of the EU. We can't just admit a poorer nation into the EU. Zelensky comes out and says, well, now that we're in war, you need to do it right away. Why? It's good for Ukraine. I can respect that. But it's bad for the war effort because this is what's contributing to Putin saying, I don't want EU on my doorstep more than it already is. And I don't want I, I don't want Western influence to grow in Ukraine. Vladimir Putin does business dealings in Ukraine with natural gas and oil, gas problems specifically, particularly among other oil pipelines. This is look, I get it. Zelensky already is like, I don't like Putin and I'm not going to work with him. Putin already doesn't like Zelensky. But this coming out is basically flipping off Putin and saying, you give us the opportunity and we will spit in your face. Again, I can respect it. But now, in my opinion, it's not the time for uh, fanning the flames of war. But look, I don't think it's the biggest deal in the world. We knew this was the direction it was going. I just think it is like right now when you're trying to look, peace talks. Okay, there are peace talks going on. Say you want peace. Okay, have discussions about this. This no wonder the peace talks aren't working. That being said, Russian shelling of civilian targets absolutely wrong. But do I believe it? I'm sorry, I don't. I saw a video of shelling. That's it. I don't know what the building is, and I don't know who launched these missiles. You want me to blindly believe people in a war? You're nuts. I have a tendency to believe the U.S., the West, and NATO over Russia or, you know, um, anyone who's supporting Russia in this, for sure. And I'm not going to blindly follow Twitter accounts. But I'm going to need some legit evidence because I have questions. Why would Russia target a a civilian building? How does that benefit them in war? It doesn't. It could have been a mistake. It could have been collateral damage. These things happen. So I'm not saying I would believe Russia as a false flag or anything like that. I'm just saying you got to tell me what that building was, because even then it could be, oh, yeah, the the Ukrainian military was staging in, in, in a mall. And then when Russia hit it, they claimed it was a civilian building. That could be possible. I don't know if that's true. It's speculative. What I do know is they're reporting Russia did this. Okay. I'll tell you what I think. I lean towards that's more likely than not. I also lean towards I'm not going to make a definitive statement on what that really means or whether it's true or not, unless you give me hard evidence, which is which is really difficult to do. It's it, it admittedly is very difficult to do. How do you do it? Do you show the Russian tank with the flag on it firing rockets? So for me, I can just say the war is wrong. And so long as Russia is engaged in this war, I say they bear responsibility for this. But again, you want to claim they're blowing up civilians? Show me the evidence. And I, 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 I get it. Hard thing to do. Now Russia is being hit with these sanctions. Russian banks being removed from SWIFT. I just think all of this, is, I, I don't know what you do. I got to be honest. Russia invaded Ukraine. It's bad. It was a mistake. I think it was completely wrong. Anyone who dies after this, that's on Putin. That's on Russia. That's bad. We don't need war. And if Russia was losing the influence game and the West and NATO were able to expand their powers and and bring in more countries, well, that's, you know, it's too bad. They got more to offer. Putin, couldn't you have stabilized your economy? You've got massive amounts of resources and territory. What's the problem? Oh, declining population, waning influence. And so this is the actions of a desperate man. But I worry. Sanctions could work. It could make things worse. The dude is sitting on a nuclear stockpile. And if he's already desperate, you don't need to be more desperate. But again, what do you do? The coordinated effort of multiple nations is intended to inhibit access to financial resources due to the invasion of Ukraine. SWIFT is the international payment system. Take a look at this from TimCast.com. Russian ruble drops more than 25%. Increased financial sanctions on Russia and the plunging value of its currency may signal political unrest for Putin. Russia closes its stock market as the ruble plummets. People in Ukraine are reportedly lining up to ATMs, trying to get their money out so they can spend it as fast as they can. Interest rates have reportedly spiked to 20, 20 percent. And people are worried. Is Vladimir Putin really prepared for international conflict on this scale? Is he the tip of the spear for something bigger? Or is this just a desperate action of a man who knows he's aging out, the Russian empire is gone, and it's the only opportunity he has 
to do something. <clears throat> I thought it was funny. There's a meme where they're like, you know, Putin could have gone out as like an alpha Chad who maintained all this power and, you know, boot, did, did all this stuff for Russia. Instead, he's going to go out as a historical embarrassment as he loses and, and, and blunders. And could you imagine? You know, I'm playing uh, this game. It's called Horizon Forbidden West. You may have played it. I like video games. Uh, Horizon Zero Dawn. In it, there's a character who basically condemned the planet. The planet gets wiped out. And uh, I wonder if Vladimir Putin becomes so desperate that he says he will fire nuclear weapons. Oh, they're nuclear deterrent, he says right now. But what if he does? And then what? In 100 years, after we pick up the pieces of nuclear disaster and chaos, people tell stories of the psychopath that was Vladimir Putin who started this war. Now, they're going to blame the U.S., and this is where things could change. What if China comes out and says the U.S. provoked this? I mean, I mean, they're basically saying we fanned the flames and that we initiated this conflict. What happens if Russia and China win? Well, then 500 years, they'll, this history will be written very differently. And the U.S. will be seen as the bad guys, a declining empire, the United States. And yeah, they're a declining empire. In desperation, sought to gain more and more control, but spread themselves too thin and then, but humble resistance fighters stormed in to stop the spread. History is written by the victors. They'll write whatever they think. Russia getting hit, though. It could mean they can't sustain this. Take a look at this. We have this, this graphic from Daily Mail. Sanctions placed on Russia by governments around the world. Japan has sanctioned. Switzerland, the EU, Canada, the US, UK, Australia, New Zealand, Taiwan. Look at this photo. Vast queues have been seen outside Russian ATMs, despite the country's central bank hiking interest rates in a bid to stop a run on the ruble. Yeah, you keep your money in that bank account and watch those interest rates rack up free cash for everybody who's got money. Yeah, except your money won't be worth anything. So maybe you should spend it. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't. I think the people of Russia, they'll probably say our life got worse because of this conflict. For what? Really? To oppose some fear of an expanding West for Putin's ego, for some noble cause, depends on what you believe in the media that you consume and what do you watch. Now, my fear is for the international conflict. Could this be World War III? Former top Pentagon officials are going to Taiwan in show of support. Really? This to me is crazy. Right now? Yo, China is not happy. The New York Times, why the Chinese internet is cheering Russia's invasion and we're sending people to Taiwan. Okay, dominoes falling over. What can I say? Dominoes falling over. The New York Times says as the world overwhelmingly condemns the assault on Ukraine, online popular uh, online opinion in China is, is mostly pro-Russia, pro-war, pro-Putin. As the world overwhelmingly condemns. What does that mean, the world? Yeah, us. The U.S., NATO, the West. China is certainly part of the world. But I want to show you this. I don't know if this means anything, but we could be seeing World War III happening right before our eyes. There have been numerous stories about hackers, anonymous Russian civilians hacking infrastructure, jamming up train stations or banks. There's a viral video showing a guy trying to charge his car in Russia but it was the, the, the car charger was hacked and it says, you know, uh, was it long live Ukraine, victory Ukraine, and he can't charge his car. Are these just the ideologically driven citizens of a nation or are these government actors feigning uh, involvement or, or, you know, not, not feigning involvement, um, feigning uninvolvement? Oh, oh, it's not us. Just these crazy hackers disrupting your infrastructure. Japan. Measures uh, targeting exports of semiconductors, assets, asset freeze placed on financial institutions, suspension of visas for Russian individuals. And then we get this story from today. Toyota suspends all Japan factory operations after a suspected cyber attack. Toyota said it will suspend factory operations on Tuesday, losing around 13,000 cars of output after a supplier of plastic parts and electronic components was hit by a suspected cyber attack. Could that have been Russia? Do you think that Vladimir Putin would start a war without being prepared? Honest question. I think the answer is no. It's possible the answer is yes. 
Considering Russia's cyber capabilities, I wonder if we're making several mistakes. Underestimating Russia, you should never underestimate your, your adversary in a war. The assumption that uh, things Putin is doing make him, you know, appear weak. What did Sun Tzu say? When you are strong, uh, appear to your enemies as weak, they'll make mistakes. You don't want, would Putin want the West to know what their true capabilities are? Now it's possible Russia is just not nearly as powerful as they, as they are, and that we actually do know, and we actually have good reason to outright say, you're weak and you can't do anything about it. But what if there's the risk that Russia actually has developed some kind of cyber weapon capability or weapon we don't know about, and that we're walking into a very, very dangerous situation, and we're the ones projecting strength? That's what I find interesting. Sun Tzu says, when you are strong, make your opponent feel you are weak. You know, you want to throw them off. Appear weak when you are strong. Appear strong when you are weak. What about what the West is doing? Coming out and saying, we're winning, we're the best, we're the strongest, and Russia is failing. I'm concerned about that. So I think you got to be careful about the propaganda, because we don't know. We don't know, and it doesn't matter whether they're strong or weak. What matters is we end this war, and we end it as, as soon as we can with minimal casualties and collateral damage. I hope the peace talks can work, but I feel like dominoes are lining up. Over in uh, D.C., they've got 700 National Guard being deployed. The Ring of Steel has been deployed fencing up at the Capitol. Things aren't going well internally for the U.S. Could it be that the U.S. is weakened, crumbling, the Achilles heel, the culture war? And so we are desperately trying to project strength at a time when we don't have it. This will hit you. Inflation will be worse than feared this year, Goldman Sachs predicts. The inflation picture has this, worsened this winter, as we, expect, as we expected, and how much it will improve later this year is now in question. Given that uncertainty, Goldman Sachs is raising the, its inflation outlook, a jump from the previous forecast of 3.1 to 3.7. Goldman now expects consumer prices, which rose to, to 7.5, to cool off to 4.6 by the end of the year. But it's going to be worse than we thought. Here we have from the Daily Mail, prices of gas jumps to a national average of $3.61. It's almost four bucks out here. Up almost a dollar on last year as price of oil spikes following Russia's invasion of Ukraine. It won't be overnight. What's happening with the war is going to impact everybody. First, the invasion. That's going to, that immediately impacted speculation, gas imports. Soon we will see a ripple effect when it becomes harder to get gas, which means with demand being so high, prices will go up. But then you have the sanctioning on Russia, which means people in Russia who buy and sell won't be, which will slow economic activity. And then we're going to see a major supply cutoff, certain goods, notably natural gas, oil. With supply going down, demand remaining the same, you're going to see prices go up. It's going to ripple outward. It will reach you. I hope you're paying attention to all this stuff. I don't know if nuclear war is on the table or anything like that, but I think it's fair to say that whether this news, whether any of it's true, whether any of it's false, I can tell you this. News impacts economics. Okay? People are going to see this. Speculators are going to start buying oil. They're going to start buying up stock in companies, futures. And then you're going to see the prices go up. I don't know what you should do. I think you should just stay calm. Keep this in mind. Make sure you've got your first aid kit, some water, some emergency food. Have a plan. Know your exits. I, uh, I would not want to be living in a city right about now. You know, we're about an hour outside of D.C., maybe about 50 miles. And that's a little too close for comfort, in my opinion. That's where we are. But we know our routes. We know our, we know our exits. And we've got backcountry roads. And we've got all-terrain vehicles. I don't. I don't want to believe we'll get to the point where like air raid sirens are going to go off and they're going to be like duck and cover. Maybe for the first time in my life, it actually feels like there's a real prospect for nuclear war. And I'll outline it to wrap this up. I was a kid during the Cold War and it was dwindling. It was kind of, you know, I don't know, fall, the Soviet Union was falling. But I wasn't old enough to experience that or understand it. That's why I say for the first time in my life. Russia invades. They blame the West. Belarus says, or, you know, it's expected they're going to be joining with Russia. They've got Russian troops in their country already. 
Then you see other countries start taking sides. Switzerland saying we're no longer neutral is scary. China joining with Russia. More countries are aligning. China wants to take Taiwan. So how long? You know, what's the next step? It could be the sanctions work. China doesn't want to risk losing assets in trade. They like being rich. They like having access. Or ideology could take over. China says, U.S., your time is done. We are taking over and we are not going to be bossed around by you anymore. We don't care about your economy. You can't offer us anything. They side with Russia, their neighbor. Russia is now bolstered, wins Ukraine, takes Belarus, expands. Latvia and Estonia freak out. What happens next? I don't know. Wish I had all the answers. I'm sure a lot of people are going to say it's never going to happen. It'll end here. But I ask you how we got to that point. I also feel like in the U.S. we are still facing the prospect of a civil war. And maybe that's the real issue. Maybe the, the, the liberal economic order or Western countries know the U.S. is facing a very real crisis within its own borders. And thus, the U.S. could falter. Donald Trump was huge. You know, his election changed everything. The powers that be, the Democratic establishment, the Republican, the neocons. When Donald Trump got elected, their power was seen to be faltering. You know, there was blood in the water. The sharks will come. And maybe they know it and they cannot get a handle on things anymore. Maybe Putin knows it. Maybe that's why he's taking this action now. Maybe he knows these sanctions won't stop anything. Sure, they'll face hardship. But he's confident, isn't he? Or he's crazy. I'll leave it there. You decide. Comment below. Next segment's coming up tonight at 8 p.m. over at youtube.com slash timcastirl. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you all then.